Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing my first of many Valorant roster rebuilds, and today we're going to be starting with MIBR. Um, we'll be doing all of my Americas teams first. So we have this one and two more Americas ones for individual videos, um, as well as my loud video that I already did. And then two other teams, or three other teams actually making changes um, in terms of. Uh, like the rest of the scene, uh, but I won't. I won't be making videos on teams that make one change. It's only two or more. So we have three teams with under that criteria. And first up, we have MIBR. Um, if you guys enjoy, make sure to leave like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Go check out my Twitter. I'll be tweeting updates about the series uh, throughout the off season here while I'm making it, as well as go follow me on Twitch, which I'm pretty sure that link is in the description as well. Um, I'll be streaming a lot more once the series is done, uh, so I can kind of do other things other than make videos. So yeah, you can go check that out. I think I have a link to another channel down there where I make like guides for like premiere maps and stuff, just like going through util on certain agents or whatnot. Um, I have a couple videos up there. I might make some of those during the off season. We'll see. Uh, but go check all that kind of stuff out and yeah, like subscribe, everything like that. And let's get right into it. So before we fully get into it, I do need to clarify that this is what I would do with this roster, not what I think will happen. So uh, just to make sure everybody knows, um, but yeah. So first we need to go through what this team did last year. In the offseason, they added Artzine and Mazine. Um, Mazine from Furia, Artzine from Tier 2 in Brazil. Um, two like okay signings at the time, it wasn't like blowing me away. I did like art scene though. Uh, they got fourth, sixth, uh, lost in play-ins at America's kickoff. They did get a upset win over C9 and beat Furia, I believe, in groups. Uh, but other than that, didn't look too great. And went 0-5 in stage one. Then they added Liazi, Rich, Rich Scene, whatever you want to call him. I think it's just Rich. Um, and Paula before stage two, which were three signings that I actually really liked. Then they went 1-4 in stage two. Despite I think looking a little bit better than that um, in terms of just, I don't know. They, I mean, it definitely looked a lot better in terms of just how well they played in stage two. Like they almost beat loud. Um, and I think they did some stuff against like Furia. Not really, no. And I mean, they beat EG, but like, I don't know. I don't think either of those te teams really cared about the, that game. It was just kind of just playing out the extra game pretty much. Um, so they did manage to get a win last year, but obviously uh, not too great of a year. And now normally for teams like this, I would go, all right, we need to get younger and build for the future. But with some of these players that are available, if you watch my loud rebuild, um, I think we got to do some something a little different. So our goal for this new roster is to be the best Brazilian team in 2025 and maybe beyond. Um, I have three insane signings coming in here um so yeah like three genuinely players that i think could be world class next year so yeah i guess on that note we will go through the three players that i'm removing first getting rid of the yazi art scene and ma um i don't think any of these three should be a huge surprise for anybody uh maybe some people would want paula gone maybe some people would just want the whole roster gone uh, but I think the one player that was a surprise is Artzine. But we'll get into these players more individually in a second. Now onto the first player here, Liazi, who I just he just wasn't good for this team. Like I thought he was playing a better role for him in terms of the flex rather than the smokes that he was playing for Furia, which I think he I mean he did play better on Furia, but I think he just I don't know I think he was just worse on this team for whatever reason. He would have really good maps when he was playing, or maybe not have maps, but like halves when he was playing like the Gecko or the KO sometimes. And then for the second half, he would get one or two kills and just do literally nothing. Um, I do like him a lot more if he's playing Sentinel. Um, and I think that's something he should probably be looking to do in tier two next year. Um, maybe some other team would pick him up like if a Brazilian team wins Ascension or something like that, and one of their players gets poached or something like that. I don't exactly know. Um, I also liked his duelist play when he did play it in Tier 2. Um, 
But yeah, I don't know. He's just not consistent enough. Um, and I just think he needs a little bit more time to develop in Tier 2. Maybe get to an Ascension or something like that. Play on more land games before he really, like, can play on a Tier 1 team. Because I, I just don't think he is consistent enough. And I think that's the, the big thing with him. Then we have Artsin, who definitely is the biggest surprise on this. But if you watch the Loud rebuild, I think you know who is going to be replacing him. Um, he, I mean, he was pretty bleh on Duelist up until like stage two, where he switched to this like Sentinel role. Um, and I think he showed a lot more within that role. Um, just like the lurk timings, like the anchoring of the sites, it started pretty not great. Uh, in terms of a sentinel play, but as they got down the line in the season, I think it looked a lot better. Um, but I just think he's just being replaced by a better player here, and there's nothing he can really do about that. Um, now, I will say he does get picked up by um, by loud if you didn't watch it, so or watch that rebuild. So I'm not getting him out of tier one here. It's not that I don't think he's a tier one caliber player. Again, it's just a better player replacing him. Then last up, we have Mazin, who's actually the, probably the player that I have the most to say about. Um, because I think he did, towards the end of the season, show a lot more decent stuff in terms of calling, which was kind of the opposite of what it was for when he was playing with Furia. I'd be interested to see him play for another, like, good team uh, with, like, good players around him. But I think he just didn't show enough from, like, a structure point of view uh, and, like, keeping everybody together to justify keeping him. Um, so I can't also, he's just being replaced by a better player kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I think I'd, I'd be interested to see him in a really good team, not having to play with a bunch of young players. Um, but I think he's going to have to prove it a little bit more in tier two, maybe take a team close to Ascension or to Ascension or something like that. And just be one of the better teams in Brazil. For that matter and then kind of come back up into tier one all right so now it's time to get into ro what roles we actually need here we need a flex player we need a smokes player we need a sentinel player and one of them needs to be an igl luckily those are really the three main roles that you get your igls from uh, so it should be pretty easy to find one um in terms of players that we could be picking up for igls you have sadak rafa uh, and besney I don't know if Besney's still IGLing, but he used to be for uh, another team last year when I was really interested in him. Uh, so I think those are the real three big names after Gabish went to um, Loud. Uh, we did cut Sadok. <coughs> we did cut Sadok and Less in the Loud rebuild. Only well, not cut. I think selling them is more of a. Like accurate representation of what uh what we were doing with them um but yeah in terms of smokes players you got cortesia goo and rgl who was cut from mivr earlier in the year uh, for seemingly no reason i thought he was playing really well still uh, but regardless uh, like everybody was underrating him coming into this year when i thought he actually played really well last year and then this season people started to actually realize that he was a good player and then MIBR just cuts him. So like, I don't know. It was weird to me. Then for flex slash initiator players, I didn't really look too much into this, honestly. Um, you have Vinny uh, and you have Sassy potentially, um, who might be removed from Sentinels, might be retiring, might stay on Sentinels. I don't exactly know. Um, but yeah. Then for Sentinel players, you have Les, who I did talk about, and you got cut from Loud. Swagetsu or Swag, I don't know exactly what he goes by. I think it's just Swag, but I think Swagetsu is cooler because it's like Sagetsu, but Swagetsu. I don't know. I, I, I like that name. And then uh, Luke Show, I believe is how you pronounce it, who was a decent player that I watched as well. And honestly, I've been teasing this from the beginning of the video. We have Sadak as the new IGL of MIBR. Not much, much explanation needed here, honestly. The best Brazilian IGL uh, has been the best IGL in the world at a few points during his career. Like, 
end of 2022. Maybe you could argue it since he won. Um, what's it called? Champs. That's what it's called. Wow, that was way too difficult. Since he won champs. And then, like, honestly, I thought he was the best IGL in the world of, throughout all of 2023. Um, like, when they got to the finals of lock-in and even though they lost i still thought he was the better just caller than boaster like boaster had the better team around him pretty obviously um but sadak had been building up different young players for two years at that point um then a third coming into this year but that didn't really work out as well um and yeah i i mean he's a very solid fracking igl i do think that aspect of his game gets overrated a little bit um, in terms of just like they'll have really really good rounds but like in terms of round to round consistency in terms of the fragging it's not really there with him um, like he'll do some st like he's not going to be fns and he's but he's also not going to be munchkin either who i think is just on a completely different level um but yeah and i don't think it's like like his support of util is very good but i don't think it's like elite either um and then i think the other aspect that i didn't actually have written down here is the youth development like you have paula here you have um rich scene or rich i again i don't know what to call him if somebody knows the exact answer in the comments please tell me i think the the broadcast generally referred to him as rich so i think i'm just gonna keep doing it that way um but yeah two really good young players that i think he'll be very good at developing um, and I'll just say one other young player coming in here as well. Um, then, I mean, we have Les, who I think pretty easily is the, e I mean, is pretty much the easiest pickup in the world for this team. Uh, even though they did have to remove art scene for him. Uh, I mean, you're picking up my goat here. Like, I, I love Les so much. I was kind of a, I was a bit of a Les hater when it came to, uh, like 2022. But 2023, like, after watching that NRG game, uh, the, like, insane one on Fracture, uh, and, like, I think it was an insane map on Pearl as well, like, I realized, yeah, okay, this guy's just the best Sentinel player in the world. Now, do I still think that? I think I would have a couple guys over him right now, but... In terms of getting a lot better of a team around him and having a super successful team, I think he would probably be um, one of the best Sentinel players in the world. Like, actually making international events, being able to prove it, um, I still think he would be up in that tier. And I do think if you want to look for weaknesses in his game, I think he's just not like as great in terms of playing around teammates. But when he gets on his own in terms of the lurking, anchoring, clutching, stuff like that, He's probably the best player in the world at that, um, just because of, I mean, it says here, he's a top five aimer in the world. Um, I kind of went backwards through the bullet points, but I think that was probably the correct way to go through it. Um, yeah, just an unbelievable player. And, I mean, you're not going to get a chance to get a guy like this most of the time. Then, finally here, we have Cortesia, who was an elite smokes player in tier two. Like, in terms of rating him against other tier 2 smokes players in brazil he was elite i think he was probably the best player Ooh, that's that might be a hot take um he's up there for like top two maybe top three players that i watched in tier two last year or not last year this year um and that's saying something like he is unbelievable he reminds me a lot of valen in terms of being a good player in terms of supportive utility but also having that clutch factor the fragging as well a lot of like mid-round multi-kills and stuff like that um he's just i mean insane and i think a player like him is really needed for this team because it adds like young fresh talent into a team that has the two big veterans in sadak and less as well as the rookies, I mean, maybe not rookies at this point, but young players in Paula and Richstein. I again, I said Richstein again. I'm reading it off of my, I have a spreadsheet for like all the moves that I'm making in this series. And I, I have it as Richstein, so I probably should just make it rich. 
instead. So I will stop reading it as Rich Team. Uh, but yeah, those two players, as well as uh, the three young guys, I think making rosters like that, where you have a couple veteran players, and then you get a bunch of young upcoming talent, I think is really the way to go with um, building one of the better teams in the world. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to bring this team up, but like, Hundred Thieves back in the day with like that Hiko Asuna Steel, um, Dicey, and fucking oh my god, Nitro. That's who it was. I mean they they did the three veterans approach with that one. Um, but like, I don't know what other teams built like this. I guess you could say Foot with like Cned Fallen at a captain, um, and then having Yedige and Cracks. Um, Vitality definitely did. We had Safe Trek Sender and then Kicks and Runner. Uh, Farming Core just went all young rookies. Liquid kind of did this as well. Uh, but just kind of point being, having a couple veterans to kind of teach rookies the ropes kind of the thing um, is very good, especially when one of your veterans is the IGL. I think that's very, very important. All right, so our final roster here, we have Paula on the Duelist role, who I didn't really talk about too much, but he's just... I mean, I thought he was really good in Tier 2, and I thought he showed some really nice mechanics with his first games on stage for MIBR. I mean, he only played, what, four games for them? Because he didn't play the Lev game, right? Yeah, he played four games for this team, Obviously, it wasn't great at all times, but he did have some really good moments and some really good rounds, showed some nice stuff in terms of just like general like fundamentals on the agents, I think he looked really good at. So I think he has to stay. I think you have to keep developing him. The only guy that you could really say could be better than him is Digizin. Uh, but I want to keep the young talent here. Let Sadak develop players and stuff like that. Um, then you have Sadak, who I talked about. Rich, who I talked about. Or a little bit, I guess. I'll talk about him a little bit more. I just think he's unbelievable in terms of just clutching. I think is his really, really good thing. Um, you got a you got a few clutchers on this team with him, Cortesia, and Les. Um, Sadak's had some nice stuff too. Obviously not as much Paula. So if Paula can kind of be maybe like what Miniboo is on Heretics and then have everybody else go in and trade him and have one guy to clutch at the end between Rich, Cortesia, and Les, I think that's a real good recipe for success for this team. Um, and yeah, Rich, I mean, I think his supportive util is really good. I think just getting into a more structured team like this one would be um, would be very good for him. Uh, Cortesia, kind of same different, or not different, same, kind of same thing with him. And yeah, I think both players would look really good there in terms of just like two support, very supportive young players. And then Les obviously is just a rock. So with that, that'll be the end of the video. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next one for, I'll, I will reveal the next team in each rebuild. But um, I think I'm going to do NRG next. I won't tell you who the last team is until the NRG video. But I think my plan is to record all three of these in one day, then um, upload them like with one day in between each other. Um, maybe I'll give myself a little bit more time, like maybe one every three days. Like I go Tuesday, Thursday, uh, and then next week, Tuesday, Thursday as well. And then the Thursday one would be recapping every team. So going through why I didn't make changes on certain teams, why... I did make like singular changes on some teams and yeah, so that should be interesting, but that'll be at the end of the Americas part. So we'll do NRG, then the other team, then that video, and then either EMA or Pacific, and then we'll keep moving on uh, to other content, streaming, other channels, stuff like that, and then come back for the start of the season pretty much. So again, let me know what you guys thought of the team in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.